When discussing the best practices of 3ds Max as they relate to modeling, you quickly realize that there are a lot of best practices. Another aspect of best practices is that there are a lot of varying opinions on what in fact is a best practice. However, in essence, a best practice is one that reduces the amount of time it takes to accomplish any task, provided it provides the optimum desired result. In this chapter on modeling, we cover quite a few different modeling techniques, each with its own unique set of best practices. Some of the best practices we've covered in this chapter relate to the use of 2D shapes. Two-dimensional shapes are used in 3ds Max for a variety of purposes that include modeling, texturing, and animation. When working with two-dimensional shapes, one way to use them as efficiently as possible is to use a single spline in order to create an outline object. This simplifies drawing a complete outline by allowing you to offset a single spline and create a complete closed spline object. Once you have a complete closed spline object, it can be used for a variety of purposes. One purpose we used it for in this case is to create a road embedded in a landscape. While there are other ways of drawing the road, using the Shape Merge tool, along with closed spline objects, makes it much easier and provides a much more flexible result. Two-dimensional shapes are also very helpful when used as the basis for three-dimensional objects. Open and closed splines can be used to generate complex three-dimensional shapes by using modifiers such as bevel and sweep. They can also be used to create lofted objects, which provide even more flexibility and simplify the creation of more complex three-dimensional objects based on shapes. Editing splines, or shapes, can be done in a lot of different ways. Some methods provide a simple yet effective way of working. These would be considered some of the best practices, while other ways are more time-consuming and complicated and create a more inefficient workflow. An example of a best practice in spline editing would be using the trim and extend commands. These commands simplify the process of editing open-ended splines by allowing you to use a second spline to cut back or add to the spline you're editing. This saves a number of steps and creates an efficient workflow. Vertex welding, when used properly, can be a very handy tool for cleaning up complex shapes. Cleaning up complex shapes not only makes for cleaner models, but it can also help reduce the polygon count when those shapes are turned into three-dimensional models. This also has the result of helping to reduce render time. Using vertex fillet when editing splines may seem like a simplified idea for best practice. However, using the fillet tool to create rounded corners simplifies the process greatly and creates a uniform and consistent result. It also reduces the number of steps needed to create a rounded corner when editing splines in 3ds Max. Best practices are not limited to working with shape objects when modeling. 3D modeling also has quite a few best practices. And again, depending on who you talk to, you will find different best practices throughout different industries using the program. One best practice is to start using 3D primitives as a basis for constructing models. 3D primitives provide a very flexible means of building complex objects more simply, while also giving you the ability to modify those objects after they are created. When talking about using 3D primitives and best practices for building complex models, we can look at compound objects like ProBoolean. The ProBoolean compound object is a very capable Boolean operator that allows you to combine three-dimensional objects using options like union, subtraction, and intersection in order to build visually complex 3D objects. The ability to paint different objects into your scene in order to create visually complex layouts can save a tremendous amount of time when compared to other methods of placing objects around a scene. If you're building architectural designs, the use of the AEC objects can be a tremendous time saver and provide quite a bit of flexibility. 
Objects like doors and windows work directly with the wall objects, eliminating time-consuming editing tasks. When it comes to polygon editing, there are also an enormous number of best practices and shortcuts that can be used to minimize the amount of time it takes for you to model an object. One of the best practices when it comes to editing polygons is to learn how to use the graphite modeling tools efficiently. The graphite modeling tools themselves are only a toolbox. It is the efficient use and the proper use of the tools in the toolbox that are important. One of the most useful features in 3ds Max can also be considered one of the best practices. It is the use of modifiers when creating three-dimensional models. By working with modifiers, you add a level of flexibility and control that you can only get through the use of modifiers in the modifier stack. Whether you start from a two-dimensional shape or a three-dimensional primitive doesn't really matter. Using modifiers can save time and makes for a very efficient workflow.